Hello, welcome to another video from the stunning Czech capital of Prague. Today we're going on a red line subway mission starting from here at Letnyany station on the red line all the way through the centre and out the other end to see some of the bigger sites and also some random things along the way. So here we're starting at Letnyany which is on the outskirt of the Prague metro, the last station. We've got a bus station, we've got a random little, and we've got lots of fields. So let's head into the station, grab a ticket and get this mission underway. The good thing about quiet end stations is the lack of queues, so we can quite easily approach the yellow ticket machines and look at the different options. There are short tickets for 30 minutes or 90 minutes or much longer passes for 24 hours or 72. For this journey I'm going to take the 72 hour ticket because I'm in Prague for 4 days. This costs 330 kroner, which in current conversions to pounds is about £11.50, £12. When you first buy a ticket, remember to validate the ticket in the machine, it'll punch the time that you've started so that if it gets checked, they can make sure that your ticket is currently valid. There are no actual barriers, so it's more about trust. Here comes the train, so it's time to jump aboard and get this journey started. Taking a closer look at that map from the intro, you can see that the red line runs from the northeastern suburbs of Prague through the central areas and eventually finishes down in the southeast, a total journey of around 20 to 21 kilometers. So after a very short journey, we're getting off at the second station on the line, Prose. Time to head upstairs and outside and see what's here. So we're off at the second station, Prosec, and we're going to try and walk through what presumably is hopefully a nice park to the third station, Strizkov. I just bumped into an old lady on the stairs who was asking if the Billa supermarket was there because she didn't want to climb all the stairs out, which is very sweet. And then I think she was trying to tell me in Czech, you're not in the centre, you're not close to any of the sites, which hopefully we will be later on. Also, you'll have noticed from the announcement uh, of the board that was in the video just before it came out of the subway station that there's actually part of the red line that's closed this week uh, between museum and something about three stops away, two stops away. That's fairly central, so I presume that's walkable between them anyway. And I had an inkling that that might be the case because I came through museum station to transfer last night on the way in from the airport. So yeah, we'll probably have to walk between those or get on a sexy replacement bus. There we go, let's have a look around this park. So pretty. The park was originally designed in 1968 as part of an architectural competition, but had to be revamped in the 80s and also early 2000s due to becoming quite run down. It's now a very calming and tranquil space with the sound of running water and I think the presence of the metro stations either side has helped with its upkeep and maintenance. Coming into view now is the next station, Strizkov, which was designed by Patrick Kortas and opened in 2008 as part of a red line extension. We've made it to the next station, Strizkov, which is quite different in design from any of the other stations. It's sort of on ground or just below ground, I guess, with this kind of open glass design. It's really different from the outside and the inside to any of the other stations. So let's go check it out. Apparently the shape of the station is meant to resemble either a water drop or a whale, which are kind of different but I guess similar depending on the source that you look at, and the platform is 13 metres below the ground level. We're now taking our first trip across the Voltava River, or under it, to the next station which is Nadrazi Holoceviche. So we're off at the next station, the Drazi Holozovice, which if you watch the other videos, <laughs> sounded Italian with the pronunciation there, probably terrible if you're Czech, I apologise. Um, yeah, so we're off here and we're going to try and walk around this area, see what there is to see, and then go to the next station, which is called Voltavsko, which, judging by the name, I assume is by the river. So let's do that now and see what cool stuff there may be around here. I was meant to say before I forgot which is the area, if you've watched the other videos, which is the area where I'm staying. So I haven't really explored this much because I only arrived last night in darkness at about 11pm. So the first 
thing that looks pretty cool is this. Love a bit of graffiti artwork on a building. Let's check this out. Very glam. This area is meant to be quite an up and coming area and parts of it are a bit nicer and parts of it still have that sort of rough and ready edge. Lots of urban graffiti, lots of abandoned buildings. So I think it's something that could be improved a lot because this is a fairly central area. We're now heading in to check out this little amusement park. some kind of dead, half-open, half-closed fairgrounds behind me. Um, I assume it's gonna get busier later in the day. I'm not sure if I was just meant to walk through there or not, but I did. Um, that's pretty close to my hotel again, so I might check that out at night and see if there are more people there because the buzz is not buzzing right now. Also, I think walking through there has taken me away from the direction I actually wanted to go towards Voltavska and the river. Um, so I'm gonna awkwardly walk back through while all of the people just look at me. Also behind me, I think that's one of the bigger train stations. Correct me if I'm wrong if you check. After awkwardly walking back through the little fairground, it was time to get back on track and go towards Voltavska. Now this area is very cute. If any billionaires would like to buy me an apartment here, I will gratefully accept. In the shot, you can see the Church of St. Anthony of Padua, which is the most significant sacred building in the area of Prague 7. It was built at the beginning of the 20th century in the pseudo-Gothic style, according to the design of František Mikšir. After checking out these rather cool graffiti tunnels close to Valtavska station, it was time to cross the river again, but this time on foot. This main road will Sonova leads past the train station, which is one of the pickup points for Flixbus. We'll see that in another video, but right now we're going to take a few back streets towards Florence. This is Florence metro station, which is very close to the bus station with the same name. Pretty sure I call it Florenc in the actual footage, but there we go. We're gonna go back a couple of blocks away from here to see something rather special. Just a few blocks away from Florenc uh, metro station, which we'll go back to, is this beautiful church. Kalinsky Namesti. Let's go and check it out, see if we can get inside. So it turns out Karlinski Namesti is actually the name of the entire square, which is considered to be the centre of the district of Karlin. And the dominant feature is this church, which is actually St. Cyril and Methodius Church, which was built between 1854 and 1863. The building was designed by two architects, Rosner and Ullman, but several Czech and Austrian artists contributed to the decoration of the church. And I can tell you that in person it is absolutely stunning, even better than it looks in the video footage. Here I decided to try and get some quirky and interesting footage of the ceiling by bending backwards into some kind of crab position and filming over my head and behind my back. So if anything deserves a like and subscribe, it's probably that. Now it's time to move away from this beautiful square and church and head on with our subway journey. Prague certainly has some interesting colour choices for their buildings which I personally love. Turning right at those colourful buildings and walking for a few minutes gets us to Florence bus station. You can also see an abandoned entrance exit to the metro which is covered in graffiti, very cool. And then Florence bus station itself where you can pick up buses to many different places in Europe. There'll be a video of how to get to Vienna coming on the channel. It's now time to get back on the metro. Here we are at museum, which is very central, a lot going on here, but it's also the point where the metro is currently cut off uh, for the construction work. So we have to take a replacement bus for the next few stations. 
This was a pretty easy transfer to follow in terms of being well signposted, but it was very cramped, very sweaty, and very inconvenient compared to just staying on the metro train. Okay, I definitely need to correct my earlier statement about the few metro stations in the centre from museum um, and a few stations on. I just took the replacement bus for a couple of stops and that would have been long for a walk. In fact, it does make it longer in general because we're at Visserad or close to Visserad station and there should be a castle a little way away from this. Um, but eventually you're gonna have to go down and then come back to get the replacement bus one more stop where the metro will then work again. So who knows how long that's gonna take. We shall soon find out. As you can tell from that footage, I wasn't particularly impressed with the replacement bus service at the time. But anyway, it only took about 10 minutes walk from there to get to Visserad itself, which is well and truly worth it. Possibly one of the nicest locations I've ever seen for a tennis court, what a beautiful setting, and it's giving French Open vibes with the clay court. Whew. Well, it's certainly peaceful around here. Absolutely stunning buildings and grounds around the castle. It's a whole area that you can get into for free, but there are small charges on some of the exhibitions or things if you want to go inside. Um, apparently a lot of the locals prefer to come up here rather than to Prague Castle obviously because it's full of tourists and you can see why they would like it here. It's a great place to bring a picnic or just come sunbathing. There's loads of little park areas like this that are just so quiet and chill and although it's just a few streets away from the city, um, well it's in the city but it's just um, <laughs> close to the hustle and bustle. I was gonna say there's not much noise until uh, siren in the background, but yeah, it's really peaceful. The weather just kept getting better throughout the day and we were blessed with sunshine for these beautiful views down from the fort. Highly recommend coming here if you've never been before. Once you're done with checking out the spectacular views over the river or lazing around in the sun, there are many other things to see and do as well. Such as this neo-gothic church, the Basilica of St. Peter and St. Paul. Behind the church is Visserad Cemetery, the final resting place of many famous Czechs. Always kind of awkward filming somewhere like a cemetery should you really film or not, but I think it's worth documenting the work that's gone into this and it is kind of nice in a way to look around, although it's a little bit morbid. As much as this entire area is absolutely stunning and you could probably stay here for the rest of the evening, watch the sunset over there in the viewing area, it's time for us to get back to the temporary bus stop to take that one stop and then get back, join back on the red line of the metro to go further on because there's about five or six stations still towards the end. So let's go and explore that. Ooh, sounds like I'm definitely tiring out, but I think it's hard to put across on the screen how humid that day was. Anyway, we're back onto the replacement bus to the next station and then on the way to Chodov on the Metro. So we've exited at Chodov, which is the third station from the end of the line. I'm uh, not sure how far it is uh, in terms of walking distance to the end. But anyway, this station um, is interesting because it's right next to or almost connected to the biggest shopping centre in the Czech Republic. So let's have a look around, probably get some food. I can confirm that the shopping centre was absolutely huge and there was a good choice of food but there wasn't particularly anything interesting about it architecturally. Sorry, Westfield Chodov, or fans of it. Um, but we're gonna head outside to explore. Directly outside the shopping center is a bridge over a main highway. I actually came past here again a few days later on the way to Vienna on the bus and spotted the Westfield. Um, and across here is a really nice area. We're now on foot in the Chodov Burbs. 
um, that there's meant to be some culturally little parks around here between here and Opatov, the second last station, and then Haji at the end. Let's see. But there's lots of nice greenery, some cute little houses with balconies. It's very nice. And some guy carrying a six pack of water that's squeaking. Don't know if you can hear that. This area was really enjoyable to walk around, but I don't think there were any cultural parks that were shown on my phone. If you're local and you know different, let us know in the comments. Okay, we're gonna complete this journey by walking down a street this way to Opatov, the second last station on the line. And then we're gonna take the Metro one more time to Haji right at the end. I think that's how you say it. And yeah, see what's there. Hopefully something fun. It's been quite a nice day for filming today. It's been 24, quite humid, quite hot, but really it got a lot hotter from about three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Started off a bit cloudy, a bit sunny, but it's really just starting to cool down a little bit now, but still, just got to chill. Although there's nothing absolutely staggering to see in this area, I really do like just coming to obscure sort of metro stations and seeing what's around. Obviously it's a lot of residential buildings, cute sort of little villa houses that way, lots of more communist -y style apartments, lots of coloured buildings. Just something that you would, like no tourist would ever come around here, I guess. So it's interesting to see, but I am gutted that this street is kind of on a bank. You can see it going up slightly. Do not need that right now. So I think the metro station is fairly close to here. Fingers crossed. Luckily, my sense of direction was correct and we are going towards Opatov on this very precarious looking wall. But if the locals are doing it, I'm doing it. It's now time for our final ride on the metro from Opatov to Haye. And here we are at the final station on the red line. Let's go upstairs and have a look around. So we've made it to the final station. Woohoo! I think it's actually pronounced Haye. Something sound, it sounded more like Haye on the Metro announcement rather than Haji, which is probably a very British way of trying to say it. Um, around here, let's see if there's anything interesting. If this video goes further, you'll know that there was something. If it ends here, you'll know that there wasn't. Ooh, looks like the video is continuing. What else could we possibly see today? So the final things that I found are some interesting buildings. I think this is actually just a community center, but very nice architecture and also some Teletubby style hills. Prague is obviously a beautiful city. In the middle, we've got all the historical highlights, the stunning castle at Vesirad, but the whole city is nice. These residential areas, some kind of Teletubby hills and apartments around here. I mean, everything looks good in the sunshine, but it seems like a really just chill part of the city as well. So that's where we're gonna leave it for now. If you enjoyed it, hit like, hit subscribe. All of those things really help the channel. And I'm always in the YouTube studio checking the statistics. So help me out and I'll see you in the next one.